My name is Chef Norma. I am a personal chef. I have been in uh, cooking since I was 12. Well, I'm going to talk to you about the personal chef industry and tell you how it's going and the reason why it's going. Um, it's a very rewarding career. If you like cooking and creating and um, fusing flavors together and doing it on a smaller scale versus in a restaurant, um, a personal chef is a great career. Um, you get to cook for families and you get to have a direct impact on people's lives. And nutrition, as you're learning, is very important in making us healthy and how we live and, 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 and really what we you are, what you eat. So when you get to cook for someone, I think the greatest thing is for them to adopt you. It's all you like family, but you are part of the, of the family, and it is very personal. Um, so there are um, a lot of things that a personal chef can do in addition to just cooking for individual families. Um, you can do dinner parties. I do dinner parties for two or small events. Um, some personal chefs cater. But you can use your imaginations and your clients really like it when you can offer them a variety, you can offer them good food, and you're very creative. So if you were to become um, a chef, you know, you've got different um, avenues that you can get your training from. And even as a personal chef, you can go to the Culinary Business Academy which is where I went, which um, teaches you the business of personal chefing. Now, I would suggest that if you are interested in um, learning further about cooking and how to fuse your flavors, you've got a lot of um, culinary schools that you can go to to get a um, more in-depth education about food. This is a sample of my kitchen on wheels. And he's going to pass this around so you guys can see how it's packed. And so when I go to the client, I take my own equipment, cooking equipment. I take my own utensils. This is a sample of spices. And I carry cooking wine. I make my dressings from scratch, vinaigrettes, like a Greek vinaigrette, balsamic vinaigrette. So we talked about our kitchen on wheels, how important it is for you to be efficient and pack, because that, again, is time, and time is money. Whether you're in the restaurant, or whether you're doing it for yourself. Your efficiency of being able to get in and get out quick and to repack your equipment just like that. This is an art form. Be able to pack this back. So you finish cooking, you gotta wash everything and pack it right back because more than likely you're gonna cook for another client the next day. So when you load your car, you are ready to go for your client the next day. You know, everything I do is customized for my client. So I, I um, you know how you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you uh, this profile, you fill out this medical profile. My clients fill out a food questionnaire. So why don't we just go right to the guts of this and look at the food questionnaire. Okay, so let's say you call me and you want me to cook for you. So I would set up an appointment. I would come and sit down and interview you and your family to find out what you liked, didn't like. And as a result of this, then we would have this food questionnaire, okay, that you would fill out very in depth. And from that, I would create menus for you and submit to you for your approval for me to cook. So I would offer you five uh, meals or five entrees, uh -huh. which is a protein, a simple or complex carb, and a vegetable. I would grocery shop that morning, come to your house that day, cook your food, package it for you, and then and label it with reheating instructions, and clean up your kitchen. So it's a full service, full service. I plan, I shop, I cook, I package, I clean. Um, it depends on what their service is. I have some clients that all they do is entertain. And so whenever they do special events, they call me for that. Um, some clients I have that I cook for every week, some clients twice, um, um, twice a month, and then some clients once a month. Really depends upon what the needs. All the clients are different. There are no two that are alike. And so if you look at how many clients could you handle, most personal chefs will cook like four days a week, Friday is an office day, and um, they, depending upon the, um, how often that client wants them to cook for them, they could have anywhere from 12 to 16 clients. Yes? How do you price your items and dishes? Some do a flat rate and they do cost plus groceries. 
So if you've got a client that's very high end and they want filet mignon, then you need to go to a cost plus groceries or they want um, sea bass that's $24.99 a pound. So understanding what your costs are of your food is going to be very important for you to be able to set your price. And that's the reason why we do this consultation so that you understand what it is. So for ordinary regular foods, then you can set a base price and work with that. But you don't want a price before you understand what your client is asking you for because you go broke. Okay? Um, and then a, a simple formula that some chefs use is like a one-third, one-third basis. It's one-third the cost of food, one-third the cost of your overhead, and one-third is you want to make profit. Okay? And your overhead is going to include your equipment, your spices, your containers that you're going to um, store your food in. This is one type of container that you can use. This is pressware. They have a larger one, but that you can put in the freezer, you can put in the microwave, and you can put in the oven. So those costs come into bear. The other one is for some clients that you're going to cook for on a regular basis, is you can use, some chefs do a one-time like setup and use Rubbermaid. Uh -huh. and Rubbermaid is good um, because you want to get something that has no BPA in it. So you can get a good quality of product and you can store this and have this at your clients. But it really, again, goes to, to what they want, what types of food they want, how often you're going to be cooking for them, but all that comes into play. But I like Rubbermaid products. Um, the same thing with your cookware. When you're choosing your cookware for a client, you want to get, the reason you want to take your equipment is because it's consistent. You know what to expect. You know how it performs day in and day out. But we choose good pots, good pans. I like Cathalon. It's sturdy. I love this pot. This is like the old cast iron pot that your grandmother had. This pot will caramelize. It'll do all kinds of things, and it's wonderful. But get good pots. Get good, nice, heavy pots so they can be consistent. But the brands and the quality of the pot does make a big difference. Okay? So two good brands. But we're going to talk about pricing now. So these are the questions that you would want to know in order to be able to position yourself to where you can price your items. Okay, so what's the driving distance that you've got from your location to your client's house? And then when you use your equipment, you have to understand that there's a cost to this. So the cost to buying your equipment is everything that, that's part of your overhead cost. And so you're not going to make your profit on one customer, but what you want to do is be aware of what you have for overhead. And then you want to look at how long will it take you to recap your investment. So knowing where uh, you're going to be shopping, knowing what your client is used to. For instance, if you're, you're cooking for a client who is used to going to out to eat every a couple times a week or three, you know, maybe every night because they're busy, but you know they've got some health issues, they want to eat healthy, um, they don't like the quality of food that they're getting, then that's someone that's going to understand that they want a higher end of food. It goes back to are the food costs more expensive and where they're shopping. So for instance, if you've got a client that says, I only want organics and I only want whole foods, then those prices are going to be at a premium because they're going to run a little bit more. And the thing is, you can't price your food when it's on sale because your client, you never can get out ahead of that sale to where you can take advantage of it. Sometimes you get lucky, but you can't. So you've got your cost of, of the food and we shop for the customer as a service. Okay, we're not selling them food, it's a service. So the service provides the planning for any kind of dietary needs, everything customized, the grocery shopping for them. So we're passing that cost, there's no markup on that. There's, that's just their cost price we're passing on to them um, in the service. And then the rest is your profit. And time is money, so the quicker you get out, then the more money that you make but you must consider your time. So six hours, you make more money. Eight hours, you make less money, okay? But it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you've got to give a good quality product to your customer. But when clients choose a personal chef, they choose a personal chef for many reasons. And the convenience of having someone come into their house and cook for them, they also want variety. 